Let's go straight to the word. First Kings 19, 1 to 4. Akim Gibmadi, LLT. First Kings 19. First Kings chapter 19. We'll read four verses. Verses 1 to 4. And it reads thus. When Ahab got home, he told Jezebel everything Elijah had done, including the way he had killed all the prophets of Baal. So Jezebel sent this message to Elijah. May the gods strike me and even kill me if by this time tomorrow I have not killed you just as you killed them. Elijah was afraid and fled for his life. He went to Bathsheba, a tongue in Judah, and left his servants there. Then he went on along into the wilderness, traveling all day. He sat down under a solitary broom tree. Some other, the King James Version says a juniper tree. And prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord. He said, take my life. For I am no better than my ancestors who have already died. Father, we give you thanks. We give you praise this morning. We thank you, God, for your word, O oh God. We pray, O oh God, that, uh, that as I minister here this morning, uh, that it will be done with clarity, God. That people will be able to understand what has been said here this morning. And their lives, O oh God, will be changed. Father, we thank you, O oh God, for blessing each and every one of us. Everybody who made an effort to be here this morning. And God, I thank you for them. And I know they came expecting. Don't disappoint them. In Jesus' mighty name. And the church says, Amen. Amen. You may have your seats. In the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to speak about this thought this morning. And it is the breaking point. When I speak about a breaking point, I am speaking about that place, that time, that condition where a person has become so deeply challenged, so greatly troubled, so greatly distressed, so badly overwhelmed, so hopeless that they break down and sometimes conclude that this is it. I can't go on any longer. This is all I can stand, and this is all I am able to endure. When a person comes to that conclusion, he or she has reached what they considered their breaking point. I would be the first to submit in all honesty that everybody at some stage along the journey of life reaches a breaking point. We, we may not go pub public with it. It may not be announced anywhere. But everybody, whether they make it known or keep it unknown, in the words of the young people, if we are to keep it real, we'll have to confess that we, in time, would reach our breaking point. I saw something at my house. It was very simple, but I thought it would help to illustrate my point this morning. I'm trying to make this message. In trying to make this message, I saw some simple pieces of wood. This piece is not very thick, but with little effort, this piece of wood, with enough stress and pressure applied, can reach its breaking point. But then I saw a heavier piece, far stronger. It's far more durable. It's able to deal with more stress, more pressure. 
But enough pressure applied to this piece of wood, even this piece of wood, would reach its breaking point. And then I saw this. It's the largest piece of all. It's the thickest. It's the heaviest. It's the most durable. It's the strongest. But even this piece, as strong as it is, given enough pressure, under enough stress, this piece will also reach its breaking point. Not all persons are as strong as others. And a little stress, a little pressure can bring them to their breaking point. Yet there are some stronger, stronger than others, but even with given and given more stress and more pressure, they would reach their breaking point. But interestingly, there are some super saints who try to project this image that, that nothing breaks me. Nothing gets the best of me. Nothing can ever get to me. Nothing can ever affect me. That nothing can affect me in a negative or distressful way. Just like this large piece of wood. All those who feel that they are super saints. With the right amount of stress. With the right amount of pressure. With the right amount of trials and tribulations. With the right amount of hell breaking loose. That can cause even the strongest of the strong to reach its breaking point. I'm trying to say this, and it's my first point. Each person, every one of us, has a breaking point. I don't know who I'm speaking to this morning. As quiet as it may be kept, each person has a breaking point. When I was a young boy growing up in the countryside of Trinidad, there were no color televisions. Some of you looking at me like you never knew it didn't have color. There were no color televisions back then. All the televisions were black and white. Everybody here should remember that. And as a boy, I remember when the antenna for that television used to be either outside on a pole or on top of your house. And I also remember that no television stayed on past midnight. <laughs> I remember when the station that did exist back then, TTT, signed off at a certain time, a certain hour. I think it was midnight back then. And I could vividly remember TTT signing off with the national anthem. The national anthem, then you have this yellow, green, blue, whatever lines would come across the, the television. Nothing else to show. But I also remember as a boy, early on a Saturday morning, when my father was finally able to afford a black and white television, we would come together, my brothers and I, in anticipation and excitement on that morning, just to, go to see a particular show. And that show was called Superman. <laughs> and I want to help our young people and youths who came along after the era of Superman. Superman, as everyone would recall, was a crime fighter. He was a hero, a superhero. And he possessed strength and ability. He was, he was that kind of person who had what we call an X-ray vision back then. He would see through walls. And he would see what's happening on the other side. He was really strong, so he would have thrown around large objects. Superman also possessed the ability 
to fly. And he could zoom through the air. And back then you would, you would hear this voice that would come on and say, look up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a, bird. It's a plane. No, it's Superman. But as awesome as Superman was, and as strong as Superman was, and as the, the many abilities that Superman possessed, there was one thing that always got the better of Superman. <laughs> somebody here, somebody here has been around. Yes, it was something called kryptonite. <laughs> If Superman was exposed to kryptonite, he would become extremely weak and feeble. And he would lose his ability to fly. And he would find himself in tremendous distress. Every individual, all of us, has our kryptonite. You need to figure out what's your kryptonite. Everybody has their kryptonite. Something that would break you down. Something that would weaken you. Something that would greatly stress you. Our text this morning is about a prophet whose name is Elijah. And at the time of the text, Elijah had been on the run. He had been on the run, running for his life in fear. He ended up in trouble in obedience, can you imagine this? To the will and guidance of God. He was doing what God told him to do and he got into some trouble. The Bible tells us that he had gone before the people and he had called the people into question. Because the people in the, that area were trying to serve two gods. They were trying to serve Baal, the idol god, the false god, and they were also trying to serve the true and living god. But I came to tell you that no man can serve two masters. No man. He would love one and hate the other. So Elijah called the people into question. And this question is in 1 Kings 18, 21. How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal be your God, then follow him. In essence, he was telling them, Choose ye this day who you would serve. The Bible says that Elijah challenged the prophets of Baal. And there was a test of these gods in an area called Mount Carmel. And these false gods were the gods that Queen Jezebel also believed in. Now, Jezebel, if, if you all could recall, was married to King Ahab. So by virtue of being married to King Ahab, she became the queen. But just like in a lot of households, Jezebel ran the show. Come in. Speak the truth. Speak the truth. And let the devil be shamed. Shame the devil. Jezebel ran the show. Ahab just held the position of king. But Jezebel ran the show. But Jezebel, Jezebel was a wicked woman. She was a notorious woman. She was a wild woman. She was a low-down woman. But she believed in the false god, Baal. And Elijah called the false prophets of Baal to the mountaintop of Mount Carmel. 
And the scripture tells us that 450 prophets of Baal gathered on the mountaintop of Mount Carmel. And they were standing before Elijah. Elijah was the only prophet of God. Elijah alone against 450 prophets. He stood by himself. But they were all put to the test. And the test was, whichever God will answer your prayer by fire would be the true and living God. The God that the people of Judah would serve. Elijah allowed the false prophets of Baal to go first. Because you see, when you know who you are, and when you know whose you are, you don't try to get in front. You don't have to try to outrun or be first. The false prophets of Baal, 450 of them, built their altar and started calling on the name of Baal for morning. They called from morning until noon. Until Elijah started to mock them. He said, maybe your God is asleep. Maybe your God is on a journey somewhere. Maybe your God isn't hearing. Speak louder so that your God will hear. It's either he's talking, he's pursuing something, or he's on a journey. Or per adventure, he's asleep. And he must be awakened. So speak louder. But they kept crying out to Baal. Bill! Bill! Well, Bill answered, but no fire. <laughs> no fire. That's what he wanted. He wanted fire. Could I share something with you? In this walk, in this walk, I need a God who would answer. I have to deal with too many issues. I have to deal with too many problems to be wasting time with a God who wouldn't answer. I don't want any God that have ears and can't hear. I don't want any God that has mouth and can't speak. I don't want any God that has feet and can't walk. I don't want any God that has hands and can't use them. I don't want any God that has eyes but can't see. When the doctor says to me, I have a disease, I have a complaint for which there is no cure, I need a God that regardless of what the doctor say, I need a God who would answer. Bill did not answer. He did not answer. There was no fire, no fire. And the scripture tells us that Elijah prepared the altar of God. And he was so confident that when he prepared the altar, he poured water on the altar. Built a trench, dug a trench around it, and poured water in there as well. Confidence in who you serve. So he saturated the sacrifice. And water ran down from the sacrifice into the trenches that he dug around the altar. And Elijah called upon the name of the true and living God. And fire fell from glory. Fire fell from glory. The fire burnt up the sacrifice. The fire burnt up the wood. The fire burnt up the stone. And the fire was so awesome that it got down into the trenches where the water was. And the fire consumed the water. I'm not making this up. It's all there in the 18th chapter of First Kings. Amen. When you get some time, read it. This book, I can't make it up. This book was here long before I came here. Long before I came here, this book was here. After that, Elijah gave the order that all the prophets of Baal must be killed. They were all slain. 
And Jezebel received the word. Remember, the Baal was her God. So she received the word of what Elijah had done. She got the news and she was outraged. She was infuriated. She was vexed over what had taken place, over what had happened with her, with her prophets. So she sent a messenger to Elijah. She had a messenger go to Elijah. And the message from, from Jezebel read like this. By this time tomorrow, by this time tomorrow, you, Elijah, would be my captive. And I'm going to do to you the same thing that you did to my prophets. And because of that message, Elijah ran for his life. And that confused me a bit. It confused me. Because Elijah was this courageous man who stood up in front of 450 prophets on the Mount of Cam on Mount Camel. And how could a man who faced all these people with boldness could run for his life? Hmm. <laughs> he started running from a message he got from Jezebel. A low down woman. One low down woman put this courageous prophet in a, in a spirit of terror and fear. And Elijah took off running. Listen. Listen. There's something about an angry woman. And it's even worse when she's a low down woman. Come on, brothers. Come on, brothers. Bridle my tongue, Lord. Bridle my tongue. He was so bold on the Mount Carmel. So courageous before 400 men. But now running from one low down woman. The message that he sent was, by this time tomorrow, I'm going to do to you the same thing that you did to my prophets. And Elijah ran. But let me speak to the men. Let me speak to the men here for a moment. Have you ever had an encounter with your wife or your significant other? And she says to you, after work. <laughs> after work tomorrow, I want to speak to you. Without an agenda. And you are here thinking, what in the world have I done? For me, hair starts to grow in areas where hair don't normally grow. You start to go over your records, where you've been, who you have spoken to. You're thinking about birthdays and anniversary, thinking whether you forget. Needers. That's, that's what they put in you. Needers. But well, men, you can sit here and pretend. Not me. Speak the truth and shame the devil. That's the mental state Elijah was in. Needers. Elijah left the servants behind and went a, a day's journey into the wilderness. And he came and sat down under a juniper tree. And as he sat down under that juniper tree, fearful for his life, he said these words, it is enough. I can't take it anymore. I had all I can stand. I can't stand anymore. And he then said to the Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my father. All I'm trying to tell you is the prophet Elijah had reached his breaking point. I don't care how holy you are. 
I don't care how close to God you are. Something, something would bring you to the breaking point. Somebody shout breaking point. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but I'm so glad that you came to church today. Somebody here knows something about breaking point. If you have not reached you, or you have been close to it, keep on living. It's coming down the road. The thing about breaking point is when you reach your breaking point, you can step out of character. You can say things that you would not normally say. You would act and behave in ways that you would not normally behave in. Some people, when they reach their breaking point, depending on the nature of the situation, would cuss out other people. And I know there are some people here who back in the day knew some other four-letter words other than Mark, Luke, and John. Some people, when they reach their breaking point, people who would normally be meek, humble, and mild, when they reach their breaking point, will slap the daylight out of you. Each person, whether you acknowledge it or not, has a breaking point. The question is, and that's my second point, what should we do when we feel that we are approaching or breaking point. Have you ever gotten close to a breaking point? Where you said, if this goes on any longer, I'm going to lose it. The question is, what should we do when we feel we are approaching a breaking point? I came by to tell you this morning that you don't need to go to, by, by, you need to, go to any psychiatrist. All you need to do is read the word. God has something in the word for people who are getting close to your breaking point. There's something in chapter 121 of Psalms, of the book of Psalms, verses 1 and 2, where the psalmist utter these words, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. All the psalmist is saying, I am going to shift my focus. I would stop focusing on the problem, and I would start focusing on the problem solver. Because if you continue to focus on your problem, if you continue to focus on that trial and tribulation, you will approach your breaking point. You may say, Mr. Charles, that's Old Testament. Is there anything in the New Testament? Well, for your information, there is a lot in the New Testament. But time doesn't permit me to give you all, so I'll just give you one. First Peter, the fifth chapter, and the seventh verse, it says these words, casting all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. Peter is here saying, cast all your cares, all your issues, all your trials, all your tribulation, cast all your cares upon him, because he cares for you. I need to tell you also about people who not only got close to their breaking point, but who went on and reached their breaking point. And in the process, they did something wrong. They behaved in some strange manner or fashion. What about those people who may even be among us who have reached the, the breaking point? Is there any hope for them? When we break down and lose it all, when we reach that breaking point, let me tell you something this morning. God provides hope for those who have reached their breaking point. In other words, if you have already reached your breaking point, help is available. Yes, help is available. If you read verse 5 of 1 Kings, chapter 19, you'll find these words. And it says, 
as he lay and slept under a juniper tree. Remember, this is when he, he, he ran out, he ran away. He was running for his life. He, he, he was in a position where he was hopeless. As he lay and slept under a juniper tree, as Elijah lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And then verse 6 says, And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baking on the coals and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and lay down again. At this time, when Elijah had reached his breaking point, God sent him an angel. You can't see them, but it doesn't mean that they are not there. God has assigned Elijah an angel to get him the help, to get him the assistance. Let me share this quick testimony with you as we, as we mention angels. Last weekend, last Saturday, I journeyed all the way to Point Fourteen because that's the way I could get free mechanical services for my vehicle. So I went down to Point Fourteen, did some repairs on my, on my buggy, drive all the way back to Arima. That, on Sunday night, that, that's a Saturday, on Sunday night, I made the same journey down to Point Fourteen again, came back up. On Tuesday, which was Republic Day, I went down to La Vega to the family day. This is in Grand Couva. Came back up. On Wednesday, I came to church here and went back up. When I got to my home, as I, as I was turning into the garage, I heard a funny song coming from the car. So I decided to reverse onto the roadway and check it out. So I did that, reversed onto the roadway. And I took a light and a shine, but I couldn't see anything. Everything was looking normal. So I said, well, what is this boy? So I sat down outside by the road, and I was just looking at the car. And something tell me, check my wheel nuts. I'm telling you this this morning, and, and, and my paws. <laughs> Thank God for Jesus. Amen. When I checked my the wheel, the, the nuts at wheel, of the five nuts on that wheel, five, one was holding. The others I could have turned it with my hands and take it off. One wheel nut. Angels. Angels. Look at the amount of travel I traveled. Up and down the people highway. I sh Listen, when I saw that, I sat down by the road again. And with tears running down my face. All I could have said was, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. The outcome, the outcome could have been so much worse. Look at that, look at the amount of traveling that I did. It's amazing, it's amazing. It's amazing. God know, knew that he wanted me to be here this morning. God pres preserved me for a time like this. Because had it not been for God, maybe the, the news would have been different this morning. I thank God for Jesus. And, and even, even before that, well, my, my, my thanks increased significantly because that was one dangerous incident that was averted. And I don't take that lightly. Maybe for some of us, it's just another testimony. But for me, it speaks about the goodness of God. God has a way that he preserves you even during the face of adversity. I don't know who needs to hear that. But God has a way of taking care. You know, you know we have this thing that we say God takes care of little children and fools. 
Well, he took care of this fool. Thank God for taking care of this fool. The Bible said that Elijah wanted food. And the angel brought him some food. He needed some water. Because the scripture said he was way out in the wilderness. I am here. I am here. I'm, I'm here alive speaking to you this morning. And it's not because I have not gone through hell and high waters. It's not because I did not have to deal with some major trials and tribulation. But I'm still here because God gave me some help. Yes. He gave me some help. He gave you some help as well. And if you know that he gave you some help, come on, just lift your hands and testify. God, thank you for helping me. All hell broke loose, but I'm still here. I went through hell and high waters, but I'm still here. I have to deal with some major trials and tribulations, but I'm still here. Because God stepped into my crisis and God gave me some help. The scripture tells us that Jezebel's stress did not matter. Stop losing sleep over the threats of your enemies. Because if God be for us, who can be against us? Stop going crazy over, over those low down people who are plotting and planning your downfall. God is able to take care of you. The word says, God is my refuge and our strength. A very present help in our times of trouble. I thank God that Jezebel's threat never came to fusion. Fusion. Jezebel's threats were never fulfilled. Because when God is on your side, it does not matter who your haters are. Is there anybody in here who knows something about haters? I want to speak to somebody who had some experience, some encounter with haters. People who despise you for no reason or no justifiable cause. People who are plotting against you. People who wanted your downfall. I'm still here. I have some haters, but I'm still here. I had some major enemies, but I'm still here. I've been persecuted but it did not destroy me. They attacked me, but they could not have their way. God has watched over me. And God has watched over you as well. I don't know about you, but right now, something is all over me. Right now, I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. Right now, I feel the power of the Almighty God and it's hard for me to hold my peace. But I have to tell you that God has been with me. God has watched over me. God has kept me in his hands. God has held me in his arms. God has been my best friend. Let me tell you, if I have a friend. I have a friend who has all power. All power. All power is in God's hands. He's able to pick us up, turn us around. He's able to make our enemies back off and leave us alone. If you're still here because God has been taking care of you, if you're still here because of the grace and mercy of our God, not because we have been so good, not because we have been so holy, but we are still here because of the goodness of God. If you have to make room for somebody, make room for somebody around you. Because you're about to give God some praise. Come on and praise the Lord for everything he has done for you. You have to praise the Lord for how he brought you even through the valleys and the shadows of death. You have to praise the Lord for how he spoke to you over the midnight hour. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Stand with me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God will take care of us. Despite the situation that we may find ourselves in, God has a way of finding us and, letting, and surrounding you with his angels. 
I spoke about my situation. Maybe there are others sitting here who have similar situations. But God would have seen you through certain that there's no way, no way other than God. God's going to take care of every situation. God would have allowed us to do all sorts of things. But he continued to look over us. We may have gone astray. We may have done some things that he didn't like. But God will continue to look out for us. Just like the prodigal son. Who went out and did his own thing. And when he came back, his father did three things for him. He gave him a coat. He gave him a coat to put on until his brother started to grow. Because he stood with his father all the time. But his father was celebrating the son who came back in. And he told his son, that son was lost. That son was dead. But he's now alive again. He gave him a ring. And that ring signifies identity. He said, even though you ran away and, and considered yourself out of sync with us as a family, we still consider, consider you a son. And that ring was to identify with his family. And he also gave him a sandal. And that sandal represented direction wherever he have to go direction so even though you have left the presence of God and you have gone out into the world and you have done all that you have done he's still here waiting on you he's still here he's going to stand with you I know what's significant about what he told that, that son he said, you haven't lost anything. You're still my son. And you're still entitled to everything. That's how our God treats with us. When we leave and we come back, when we come back to him, it's like we never left. Everything that you were entitled to, whilst you were there, you're still entitled to it. God is going to take care of us. Somebody who's here today needs to come to that one who can fix your situation. Come to the man who has promised you never leave you or to never forsake you. Come to the one who closed out the gospel of St. Matthew's with these words. I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. I don't know who needs to accept this invitation and walk out. But the Lord knows. Come on. Come on. Walk out. If you, if you think he has kept you alive and brought you this far, for you to go on with business as usual, he has kept you alive for such a time like this. Walk out. Walk out. Come on. Walk out. Lord, speak to the hearts of people here this morning. Speak to the minds. Let them walk out. Walk out. There might be somebody in here right now who is close to their breaking point. Somebody in here right now who is close to your breaking point, but don't know how to make the first move. Come on. Come on. Walk out. Walk out. God is able. The Holy Spirit works in all situations. Come. Come. Walk out. 
somebody lean over to that person next to you who's crying and tell them walk out walk out you may not have this chance again walk out walk out tell somebody if you walk out I will walk with you you don't have to do it by yourself I would stand with you. Walk out. Walk out. Will you come? Will you come? Holy Spirit, move. Holy Spirit, move. Come. Come. Walk out. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. Just walk out. Salvation is yours and yours alone. The people standing next to you can help you. Make a decision today to walk out. There's no shame. We serve a mighty God. We serve a God who will send angels around you, even if you can't see them. He will protect you. He will guide you. Walk out. Your tears may flow, but joy, joy, unspeakable joy comes in the morning. Walk out. Walk out. Whatever your situation is. Whatever you feel you can't handle anymore. Just like Elijah. You can't handle it anymore. You reach the point. Where you're saying. I feel I could take my life. Walk out. Walk out. Our God has done too much for us, for us to turn back now. Maybe you haven't reached your breaking point. Maybe you're just about to reach your breaking point. And God has a word for you. And you're here this morning because God has a word for you. He's going to take care of you every step of the way. Cast your cares on him. Cast your cares on him. And he will take care of the rest. For those of us who are still standing, who are still in, in, within the pews, just lift your hand to this group here. Just lift your hand. And before I pray for them in the video, I just want us to, to pray for them as, as a group. Father, we give you thanks and praise, O oh God, for their obedience. Many may have wanted to walk out, O oh God, but something is holding you back. That could be your kryptonite. Don't let your kryptonite hold you back here this morning. God, we pray, O oh God, for these people, O oh God, who has made the step, O oh God, and that will continue to lift your name for them, O oh God. Whatever they're going through, oh God, Father, I pray, O oh God, that this day, this time, this hour, this minute would be the end of that situation, O oh God. Father, we ask, O oh God, that you open your windows of heaven, O oh God. Let your Holy Spirit continue to flow freely among them, O oh God. Let them know that you are still God. And you're going to be here with them through thick and thin, through the valley experiences, through the mountaintop experiences through the storms he's going to be with you don't give up on our God because he won't give up on you he's a faithful God he's a worthy God so pray that every one of us in front here will understand and accept that our God is faithful and able and that he's going to turn our situations around in Jesus name Maker.
miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Way make a miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, that is who you are. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, that is who you are.